Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're discussing the various reasons for obeying God. This week, we'll deal with a few more key reasons, namely liking God, gratitude to God, and agreement with God. First, liking God. Can we control how much we like or don't like God? Well, no, we can't. It's an emotion, so we either have it or we don't. If we like God, it could motivate us to obey Him. But if we don't like God, we'll have to find our motivation elsewhere. However, remember, even if we really dislike God, we can still use our will to ignore that emotion when it gets in our way. It just takes a little effort. Secondly, gratitude to God. Believe it or not, you don't have to agree with God's plan in order to be grateful to Him. You only need two things in order to be grateful to God. One, something good to be grateful for. Two, recognition that God gave you that good thing. Everyone has something good to be grateful for. Fun games, good food, friends, relatives, and even if you don't have any of those things, you at least have your life. Your life is a good thing. No matter who you are or how little you have, if you look at it a certain way, you have something to be grateful for. Recognizing that God gave you that good thing is even easier if you understand the proofs we talked about in the first two seasons. God is infinitely perfect and is the source of the universe, so every good thing that exists comes from Him. Once you've accepted this, you're left with the following equation. Premise 1. We have good things. Premise 2. God is the source of all good things that exist. Conclusion. Therefore, God is the source of every good thing we have. Being grateful for good things is very hard at first. I once spent years without ever feeling gratitude. But if you express gratitude or choose to show it, that alone can encourage you to obey God. Last is the subject of agreeing with God, and here there's another distinction to make. There's more than one way to agree with God, and some are more important than others. Way number one, doing God's will. This is a type of agreement with God, but it's also the end goal, obedience. Obviously, it's essential to at least put sincere effort into doing this. Way number two, agreeing with God's true moral values. Believe it or not, this is not required. Even if in your heart you don't agree with the true morality of God or don't like his moral commands, the important thing is that you obey those commands, whether you agree with them or not. In fact, not agreeing with them can make obeying them even more meritorious because it requires a bigger effort on your part. Way number three, agreeing with God's overall plan of bringing people into a more loving and virtuous state of affairs. This is also not entirely required, and in a sense it's the same thing as way number two, since the whole point of objective moral values is to lead us to God. All the things I said about way two apply here as well. Way number four, agreeing with miracles and divine commands given by God. This is similar to ways two and three. You don't need to agree with every last one, just as long as you continue to put effort into obeying God regardless. Way number five, agreeing with the actions of religious people. This is definitely not required, and can even be harmful if the specific people in question are under a false understanding of religion or are only pretending to be religious. Way number six, agreeing with everything that happens under the assumption that it's all part of God's plan somehow. Here's something a lot of people don't realize. Nobody really thinks like this. Oh sure, you'll often see in the writings of the saints that they quickly accepted the will of God, even when it caused them trouble, but accepting something and agreeing with it are different things. The saints accepted tragedy in their lives for the purpose of something good that would come of it, like stronger character or a closer understanding of the Lord. You don't need to like or agree with pain, death, and tragedy to be obedient to God. In fact, it's better if you don't, because we all need to remember what the real difference is between good things and bad. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.